What's up YouTube, I'm just another guy and welcome back to the Welsh Way here with Aberystwyth Town and we're now at the end of season update and also episode or part 100 so real shame this isn't the Europa League final live com but you always have to look at the bright thing, bright sides of things and the fact that we got as far as we did in Europe and the fact that we beat certain European teams with a certain quality about them gives me great confidence going into next season's Champions League because it means that I don't really fear anyone right now. That may be a bit <laughs> naive to think that and maybe a bit overconfident, but I currently don't fear anyone. I I feel we have a really good chance of in the next two, three years now of maybe going on and trying to win the Champions League. Uh, but it will, of course, it will depend on maybe the luck of the draw and things like that. But still, I, I think we we have a chance of winning a European competition. If it does mean we, you know, somehow we get knocked out to the Europa League, I'd say we really have a good chance of winning the Europa League. But the Champions League, I don't think it's too far away now. I really don't. Uh, but let's go into the season and we'll summarise things as it's been. So... Uh, the, see, the, the league, I won't go into the league right now, but I'll talk about a bit about the European qualification. So next season we have five teams going into Europe. And top team gets the champions, because the qualifying is split into two phases, two sections. Champions and best place playoff. Best place teams, I should say. So that's the teams who finish second in this division for now. You know, like fourth in the Premier League. Uh, fourth in La League, I believe it is as well. You know, things like that. So top team. Me, because we won the league yet again, of course. Uh, we will go into the uh, Champions' third qualifying round, which means we have two rounds to play, and then we get into the group stages. TNS will go into the best place third qualifying phase, which means they have two games until they get to a possible potential uh, group stage. I do think they'll get knocked out there, which means they would go into the Europa League. But that's what the top two teams do. The team in third automatically get uh, Europe now. Before it was, they had to play in like this qualification thing here the European playoff final and playoff thing uh, but now they get Europe straight away and I believe they are getting the playoffs we'll have a check in a second but I believe they're getting the playoffs the team in second should be getting in the third and the, uh, in the third qualifying well the team who won this game here will get the third qualifying phase of the Europa League I think it is Again, I'm not too sure with the Europa League. I haven't really qualified for it enough. But I think they get the third qualifying phase. That'll be Bangor City. And then Port Talbot, because they got to the final and lost, they will be getting the final Europa League spot. So the teams in Europe next season are going to be... I want to see if they really something. So Kevin Droids Airbus. So if you finish 7th now and 8th in the league, you get a chance to qualify for Europe. That's how... <laughs> so pretty much everyone bar the bottom four have a chance to get into Europe. For the next few years. That's that's an incredible thing really. <laughs> you can finish 8th and get Europe next season. But anyway. Uh, we're going to the league. So the basic people in Europe are. Me. A boy with TNS in the Champions League. Bala, Port Talbot and Bangor City. Are all in the Europa League. Which is good to see Bangor City getting in there again. They had a relatively poor league season. Uh, but they got the Europa League for the past two years. And it's good to get consistency with those getting in Europe. And that's what Bangor City have done. So that's good there. Uh, but we won the league. Despite the fact we lost the game and drew 3. It wasn't a particularly good season in that. And in, in, in uh, you know how many points we dropped. It wasn't a good season defensively either. We can see the 19 goals. And if you compare that, how many times? So we can see three there, 13 there, and 10 there. So yeah, over the past two years we can we didn't concede 19 goals. We conceded 19 in one season, and that's our that's our worst for how many years now? That's our worst for uh, five years. So five seasons really. So not the best defensively going forward though. We scored a lot of goals, which is a really great thing to see. And overall, yeah, good, a good year for us, uh, a decent year for us, I should say, really, and a good year for the league. The reputation of the league has now increased from 29th to 26th, so up three places. We're now above the Danish Superliga, which, rightfully so, after we smashed Copenhagen, we should be really above them. Uh, we're now not too far behind the Liga, Liga Atlante, the Spanish second division, Austrian Premier League, and Slovak. First division. That's surprising there's high reputation as they are. But yeah, we're not too far off now. Battling with the second divisions of the major European forces and also uh, a few other major uh, major leagues in Europe. Uh, the Premier League still miles away, but still two and a half star. For this is this is cups. Where are we, where are we doing our cups? Again, I don't really check the cups, so we'll have a look at where the Welsh Cup is. 
Uh, there is the Welsh Cup, so it's actually one and a half star now, so that's pretty good. It's gone up from, I believe when it originally was, it was either a half star or one star, so that's gone up now. It's not too far away from getting a two star either, and it's better reputated in the Johnston Paint Trophy. <laughs> and where is our Welsh Premier League Cup? Because that should be somewhere as well. Oh, there it is, Welsh Premier League Cup. Welsh Premier League Cup is above the Johnston Paint Trophy, so and the FA Trophy, so... Uh, the Cups are doing decently well. They're growing in reputation a little bit, which is always nice to see. But anyway, to the club. To the club itself. We are now a three-star reputated team. You, I don't think you can see it here. We're still not... No, we're not on here yet. But we are a three-star reputated team. I'll go into Wales and we'll look at that in a second. Financial-wise, I don't think we're in here. No, we're not in the top 100. Uh, coefficient points-wise, guys, we're now the 22nd best team in Europe, according to our coefficient points. Going into next season, we will have... Uh, we will have 86.875 points. And I think if that doesn't get us into at least the second seed, I don't know what will. Uh, so, really was a good year in Europe for us. We picked up how many coefficient points? We picked up 27 coefficient points, the highest probably ever for us. I don't even think the quarterfinal of the, Europe, of the Champions League got us that many points. Although I could be wrong. Uh, so, really good year for us in Europe. Uh, like I said, the silver lining is that we, it did help us grow a lot, getting to a semi-final. And... It, we will benefit massively from that. The nation itself, Wales as a footballing nation, is now the 42nd best team in the world. Uh, so, um, it's fallen a little bit. I think they just missed out as well on the European Championship, if I'm correct. Yeah, they lost in the playoffs 1-0 both times to Croatia, which is a massive shame. Look at this. If you look at our team as well, we have Lloyd there, our keeper. Um, former player of us, Scott Drake. Former player of us, Kevin Bland. Uh, David Bowen. Wait, that's not our player, is it? No, it's not our player. I'm thinking of a different. I'm thinking of a different player. <laughs> I'm thinking of the other Bowen in our team. Who else is in there? Jenkins was in there. That's not our Jenkins. God damn it. Was there no one else in there from our team? Little, little disappointed with that. Only Lloyd was in there. What about the first leg? Um, Carwin came on, Lewis played, but no, not many people are in there for us. But at this point, that the nation itself couldn't get into the European Championship, it would have been would have been an immense thing to have to have achieved that. And maybe you know a couple of our players would have been called up to European continental competitions, like on the international stage, and that could have helped them grow quite a bit. But yeah, they're the second there. Uh, coefficient points wise, and we are now the 11th best team. In I don't know what this means actually. You know whatever that script that over. <laughs> anyway, the qualification places. This is the bit I wanted to get to. The qualification places because of how well the nation is doing uh, in terms of the club football. We are now the eleventh uh, in terms of qualification places, which means we get next season we get a group stage spot. So if we win the league, we will be going in at the group stages, which is monumental. It means we get none of this bull crap qualification. We can actually get a proper pre-season. For the first time, pretty much ever, because we've always had to come back very early to prepare for like a first qualifying phase of the Europa League. That was the first time we ever got into Europe. Or the first qualification phase of the Champions League or the second qualification phase. And these all start in early July. Uh, so we would have had to be coming back very soon. But next season we get a really long break. And it also means we can come back a little bit later and start for our pre-season for the start of the league. You know, we won't, any, we won't have any games before our first league, se first league game, which again is really great. Uh, but yeah, group stage, that is really good. Uh, where else are we? Uh, we still get people getting in the playoffs, uh, first qualification phase and second qualification phase. So I was correct when I said playoff third and second. So Bangor will be entering in the second. Uh, Port Talbot will be entering in the third. Balor in the playoffs and then best place, sec uh, third qualifying round TNS for this season and next season. So the the country is growing, it really is. Uh, we're going to the Welsh Awards now and uh, the Welsh had a Welsh... And that's how our reputations have grown. So, club, we are now a three-star reputated team, as I said, uh, which is hopefully unlock a few more doors for us and offer up a few more opportunities. Uh, TNS Balor are both two-star teams. Hopefully, uh, an appearance in Europe this year will help them grow because it's at a latter stage. And also, Port Talbot, Bangor City, so our top five reputated teams now are all getting in Europe, which is very, very good. Uh, Financial-wise, we are worth 18.75 million. I really would love to be taken over by a very rich guy just to help us push that final stage because we could spend big money on big players but yeah, that's not going to happen that's just a little bit of a dream 
Awards, though. Player of the Year. Walsh Player of the Year went to Terry Jenkins once again. He picked it up for the third year running. For the first time since Aaron Ramsey, back when he played for Arsenal, a player has picked it up three times in a row. And hopefully he'll get four and he'll be able to be on the same level as Aaron Ramsey for how many times he won it in a row. Who does he beat? Even Giggs didn't win it three times in a row. Even Giggs hasn't won it three times in his career, so... He's broken into a very exclusive club winning that three times, but a very good average match rate, and he probably deserves that to how how well he played. And Young Player of the Year went to Joe Pierce. Despite the fact the youngster rarely plays for us, he managed to pick it up. In fact, he had his most appearances this year, despite the fact you know he's not a really a consistent first-team player. He came second there. He, came, he won it, I mean, sorry, he didn't win second. He, came, he won it there, so that's really good. TNS have a bit of Welsh talent in them. Oh, no, he's at Wraith. <laughs> I was say, TNS never produce Welsh players. They never really have Welsh players in their team. But got, So we got first and third there with Stephen Bowen. So overall, it's been really good that now we're pretty consistent at picking up some awards or getting ranked in these awards for Wales. And uh, let's go into the league awards as well while we're at it. So player of the month, Lewis picked it up once. Player of the year ended up going to Ivan Sedmak, the 23-year-old Croat, was our backup left midfielder, but played majority of the league games because of that fact and was incredible when he did so. Look at that, seven appearances in the cup, 11 assists, 8.86 match rating as well. Could tear up this division very easily. Overall, not a bad player either. He played a little bit in Europe and did all right. So there is Sedmak, player of the year. Manager of the Year came to me yet again, and I picked up Manager of the Month award on six occasions, so it did deserve that. Team of the Season, we had all but three places, and actually, for the first time in a very long time, a player not from Aberystwyth or TNS managed to get in Team of the Season. Uh, but who was in there? Well, I have a list of Lloyd, Ferreira, Moreria, Mo Maria, sorry. Moreira, sorry. I said it wrong. Uh, Jose, Daffid, Sedmak, Lewis, and Wallace all getting in there. Uh, we'll flick back. When was the last time a non-TNS or a Boisterous Town player got in there? Back in 2021-22, when it was Chris Rees, a former player of us. <laughs> a former player of ours got in it. So, <laughs> that is great. Really great record to have. Uh, and one more award we have to look at. Young Player of the Year went to Lewis. Picked it up. Managed to get it back to us for the first time. TNS thought they nicked it last year. Maybe thought they could win the award a few more times in a row. But... Amir Lewis coming for our youth system, picking up his first Young Player of the Year award, and hopefully he'll get recognised for Wales next season because he has done really well this year. So that's the league. That's how the league's growing. That's how the club's growing. That's how uh, the qualification places for next season. I think I've covered everything from the league I wanted to show you and things like that. Paul Lynch has returned back to the league. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, he he was doing really well at Bangor City, and he he must have built up his reputation. Went to MK Dons and got sacked. Oh, what a surprise! <laughs> he got sacked after a year and four months and three months, and now he's returned back in the managed real. Uh, but he was doing so well at Bangor. I'm surprised he left. What an idiot! Uh, but that's what's happening. That's what's happened there. So I don't think there's anything else I really want to cover. So we'll go into some transfer news now for the team because we've already been making a little bit of action, a little bit of headway in preparation for next season. So one player to leave the club for £2.3 million was Dave O'Connor to Derby. Now, O'Connor to me was a player like... Uh, I was trying to remember this guy in the last episode. I'll go back and find the guy I was trying to think of. Uh, Billy Alessandro. Now, Billy Alessandro had some very good stats. He's now retired. But he had some very good stats. Never really performed. It felt the same with O'Connor. He had some good stats, but he never was up there. I mean, his stats say to me... He should be playing really well in the league. Should be having no doubt getting 30 plus goals really easily. A bit like Sousa did, just scoring left, right, and centre. And in the Champions League, he should be doing all right. But it just never really reflected. Look, he sort of struggled in the league to really find the form Sousa did. And in the continental competitions, it says he's got 11 goals. But if I were to, you know, look at his form and go on non uh, non qualification phases, he probably wouldn't have scored that many. I just I just never really found myself comfortable playing him. And so as a result, I've decided to sell him. 2.3 million, I think that's all right. Fee to pick up for the lad. Uh, he's got a bit of clauses on his on his deal as well. Uh, what, is, what are the clauses? 180k after 10 league goals. And we're getting around 27k per month for the next year. So I think it was about a million or so, maybe after 48 months or something like that. So 
it wasn't too bad, like a million clauses or something. So overall, I'm happy to pick that up for the guy. And the guy we've brought in to replace him is Phil Rogers, a Welshman striker. Not as good. He's not got as good stats, but he's still got very decent stats. According to reports, he's actually the same level as O'Connor. I don't know how true that will be. And this guy will be coming in to sort of play rotation because I want to push through Wallace and Lewis next year if I can. You know, if form doesn't allow that, I will, of course, put this guy in. But he's got a good, decent record. No, not ever a prolific goal scorer, but he's played in the Premier League for a, lot of, a long time. He's played in the Championship for a long time as well. So he's played in the top two levels and he's Welsh as well, which is an, another bonus for me. And hopefully we'll get him back in that Welsh squad because I don't currently think he's in there. I know he is in there, but hopefully we'll get him in there and scoring goals because he's not got a guest goal scoring record for Wales either. So that's the only bit of transfer news as of now. Uh, we've got a few others, uh, but because I'm going to meet you back at the start for the group stages, I think we'll do those guys in then. Uh, so it's just currently it's Fitzpatrick and Lovegrove. I was looking at other players, other strikers and things like that, but I decided to go with Rogers just because he was Wales Welsh. But this is the team. This is... This is going to be the team going forward for next season. We'll have a look at quickly at the stats. So the top goal scorer, I think, was Lewis in all competitions, even with O'Connor leaving and Wallace got 29 as well. These two are going to be playing, hopefully, first team football next season in the Champions League, like I say, if form permits. Assist-wise, Jenkins, Ted Mac, Wilson, all on great form. Player the match awards, how many did we pick up? Way too many to count. <laughs> Average match ratings, we were all over it this season. Only people not to get in it were the youngsters that were coming through our ranks. And people from our youth intake. I'm actually going to show you Steve Drake because he's he probably our best player to come for our youth intake. Despite the fact that I, I remember showing you the youth intake and saying it wasn't great. But this guy's potential is really shot up for some reason. So I'll have a look at him in a second as we flick through our team as we will do now yearly. And assists. Oh, I'm not going to assist. Great clean sheets. There you go. Not too bad record by both strikers. But this will be the team going into next season. We're going to be playing Lloyd, up, Lloyd in goal from here on out. I'm actually trying to... I might consider getting rid of Laird. Uh, I'm not too sure yet because it would always be nice to have a good backup keeper. But maybe if we can get someone after him, we'll let him go. Ferreira is right back. Jose, Moreira, Miyazaki, Miyazaki, Jenkins, Croft, Pedroza, Wilson, Wallace and Lewis. That will be our starting eleven. hopefully next season. Players and positions I'm looking for. I would like to bring in maybe another right back. Maybe a left back because Miyazaki is a little bit old. I maybe look to sell him as well. But I'm happy with them positions. And again, maybe a right midfielder. Just, but... Because he's picked up Welsh awards, I kind of want to keep playing him uh, because, well, he's not really played badly. And overall, I don't think there's many positions I really want to strengthen on. To me, unless I see someone that I go, oh man, I need to get this guy, I don't think there's going to be much action. You know, unless I go, oh man, that's a mouth-watering guy, a level of suit, so that will easily come in and just help us win something. I, I don't see much places we need to improve upon. But anyway, let's flip through the team now. Sirius Lloyd, he's grown a lot over the season. And I will be putting him in starting 11 next year. McNaughton, backup player this season. And will probably be for the rest of his career here unless he wants to leave, which I will obviously let him go. Miyazaki's stats are still holding up, so it's good to see. Maria has grown a little bit, not too much though. Overall, not a bad player. Joe Pierce, his stats are still growing. Got some really great strength and jumping reach for a target man. I'll probably look to keep this guy and sign him down to a new deal because he's not the worst striker. Got Not got some worse stats. I mean, he's finishing in composure. A lot to desire, but got some good target man stats on him. Pedroza's played very well and has grown very well as well with the club. He's wanted by a few people. If a huge deal came come in, I may look to sell the guy, but ideally I'd keep hold of him. Phil Rogers, our new signing. I've already shown you him. Matty Samuel will be playing a few more games next year. Not really grown too much. I don't think he'll ever become an incredible player, but I'm going to keep trying to play him and keep trying to allow him to grow. I said Mac, you already saw his stats a little bit ago. I won't really mention too much. Wallace, not grown too much this season. I think that's because I haven't played him a lot. Uh, but hopefully he'll do well. Coming next season. Andre Watts, one of our youngsters for the youth system, got some half-decent stats, 15 years of age, and actually broke the record, I believe, for the youngest appearance for the club, matching the previous youngest record for the club, which was uh, Baffid, I think, someone like that, a guy we had ages ago. Uh, but he broke. He was like 15 years and 100-something days, the exact same age as the previous holder of the youngest appearance at the club. Uh, but Watts is coming in, and we'll probably play a few games next season in Cups. Wilson... 27 years of age, very good player. Shame he got injured quite a bit last year and was out for a long spell of time. 
I really want one year where he's just very consistent, always here. And shame he missed that game against Roma in the second leg. It would have been would have been very useful. Armstrong, right mid, did well last season. I'm willing to keep him again, unless a big deal came in. But I'm happy to keep him for another year. Bitchell, a young strike, a young midfielder. I'm looking to try and play a bit like Matty Samuel. Didn't you know? Not the best player, but has a little bit of potential, and I want to see if he can grow into something. Steve Bowen, 20 years of age, may look good, may look to get rid of this guy now. I don't think he's gonna be really useful in a side. Carl Croft did all right last year, let me down in a few games though, especially in the Roma match. I'll give him another year, but if he doesn't perform in the big occasions, I'll probably look to get rid of this guy. Daffid did all right next last season, got in team of the year, so clearly he was all right for the league. Uh, of course, he played a few times in the Europe as well, even though I wasn't too comfortable with him playing. But he'll be back up left back for next season. Colin Drake, back up centre back now. Uh, wouldn't really expect him to feature too much. Will Evans, he's on his way out. Uh, Ferreira really has grown this year. I didn't expect it, but he's grown a lot. And really happy with this guy. I mean, I'm comfortable playing him now. The start of the year, I wasn't too comfortable. I didn't think he'd do too well, but he's done all right. He's played consistently. Halpin, hopefully a future centre mid at the side. I'm going to be playing him a lot next season to try and help him develop. Maybe not in European games, but definitely not in the league. Terry Jenkins, really good player, really consistent. Hopefully, like I say, if I can find someone really good, I'll replace him. But if not, he'll probably be here as our first choice. Jose Jose says he wants to leave. He says he wants to move to a bigger club. Uh, but currently, that, that's died down. Hopefully, it won't pop up again for at least another season or so. Laird could be on his way out. Good player, but I really want to play Lloyd. He's Welsh and he's come for our youth system. Lewis played surprisingly well because of that. I'm willing to keep this guy for another year. I did originally plan to let him go at the end of the season, but I'm willing to keep him. There is Lewis. His stats have grown incredibly. He's got some really good pace in the lad. Maybe we play him as a poacher because of his pace, but overall good player. Rob Lewis, right back. I don't think he'll play too much for the next few years. Uh, but he was originally our like third choice right back, but now we've got a new young right back come in. And we're back at Lloyd. Uh, but someone I didn't show you, I don't think I showed you... Uh, yeah, where did our young right back go? Drake, there he is. Well, I saw you Steve Drake. I don't think... I don't think I showed you Steve Drake for some reason. No, I didn't. So there's Steve Drake. Uh, apparently he's got really good potential on him. So I'm looking to try and use that. Looking to try and allow him to grow. Hopefully, you know, into into our future. Maybe starting right back for the team. And he's Welsh as well. I really want to push through Welsh talent. So he's a guy I want to see come through here. But apart from that, that is the team. We've looked through our players. I'll show you the fixtures really quickly because I didn't mention what we did in the Cups. Uh, but in the Cup-wise, we beat Bangor City. Oh, no, sorry. We beat TNS 6-4 in the Cup Final. A hell of a match. I don't know what it was. Maybe our player were tired, but we conceded a lot of goals. And <laughs> end of the day, we had to outscore TNS, something we've not had to really do for a long time. And in the Premier League Cup Final, we faced Real the first time in a long time. We hadn't played TNS. And we beat them 4-1. Pretty comfortable in the end with a Lewis hat-trick. So, this will be it for now. Uh, I don't think anything else I really need to show you guys. Uh, anyone I did added to the Legends list? I don't think so. Uh, Ocon, they were sad to see Ocon leave because he's a favourite person now. But you know what? Big whoop. We need to make progress and that's what we're going to do. So, yeah, this will be it for now, guys. Next time I'll meet you back will be the... Group stage draw, hopefully we'll be a second seed in the team and get a relatively easy group, which will mean we'll get to the knockout stages once again. So, until then, peace out.